Before we actually get to the kinematic bicycle model, let's do a quick review of the kinematics of a rigid body. Let's begin with the kinematics of a point P in space. So the position of P denoted by a vector R with the index P at a time point T is given by three coordinates, which for the purposes of kinematics can be from an arbitrary reference frame. And we'll call these coordinates x of t, y of t, and z of t. This situation is illustrated in the diagram on the right-hand side. And we assume that the position depends on t, meaning that the point p in general moves through space, meaning that it follows a particular line in space that we call the trajectory of p. Assuming that this trajectory is sufficiently smooth, which is usually satisfied in practice, we can now define the first two time derivatives of the position vector, which we denote by rp dot and rp double dot. And of course, the first time derivative corresponds to the velocity of p, and the second time derivative corresponds to the acceleration of p. Geometrically speaking, the velocity is a vector that corresponds to the change of the position over a very short period of time. So it's a tangent to the trajectory at the current position. And the acceleration is a vector that expresses the change of the velocity vector over a very short period of time. Next, let's look at the motion description of a rigid body. First of all, what is the definition of a rigid body in the field of mechanics? A rigid body is the collection of infinitely many, infinitesimally small mass points that are rigidly connected, meaning that their relative position remains unchanged over time. To describe the motion of a rigid body, one option would be to describe the motion of all of its points in the way that we've just described for a point P in space. However, this would mean that first of all, we have to describe the motion of infinitely many points. And second of all, that description would be highly redundant because as we have seen in the definition, the relative position of these points remains unchanged over time and hence we can use this fact to derive a much more compact representation of the motion of a rigid body. The way to do this is to describe the motion of one point of the rigid body, which we will call the reference point, plus the motion of all other points relatively to that reference point. To illustrate the situation, Let's assume that this here in white is our rigid body and the point C has been selected as our reference point with a position vector RC. Now P is an arbitrary point of the rigid body whose motion we want to describe and we define the vector from C to P as RCP. For the position of the arbitrary point P of the rigid body, the formula is actually quite simple. So the position vector of P is the position vector of C plus the vector from C to P. For the formula for the velocity, we need the following fact, namely because of the rigidity of the body, all points P of the body perform a relative rotation with respect to C. And that fact can easily be shown by the axioms of a rigid body. And the main argument is if you look at the point C and the point P, the distance between C and P cannot change because of the rigidity. So P can only move perpendicular to the vector RCP. But if P moves perpendicular to the vector RCP, that's a rotation about C. So let omega which is a vector, denote the angular velocity of the rigid body. 
Note that in a diagram like the one up here, the angular velocity is typically represented with an arrow with two arrowheads instead of one. Clearly, the direction of omega provides the rotation axis of the body and the length of omega corresponds to the rotation speed of the body. Also, it turns out, and this fact was probably proved in your basic mechanics class, that the angular velocity vector is actually independent of the choice of the reference point. So it's the same vector for every reference point of the rigid body. With the angular velocity vector, we can define the velocity of an arbitrary point P of the rigid body in terms of the velocity of the reference point C, where we have to add the cross product or vector product of omega with the relative position of the point P with respect to C. And similarly, the acceleration of an arbitrary point P of the rigid body is obtained as the acceleration of the reference point C plus the time derivative of the angular velocity, so the angular acceleration in cross product with the relative position of the point P plus the angular velocity cross the angular velocity cross with the relative position of the point P. As a final remark, note that thus a rigid body has six degrees of freedom for its movement in space, namely the three positions of a reference point plus three angles that describe its orientation. Correspondingly, the three velocities Vc of the reference point and three angular velocities described by the vector omega. And in terms of accelerations, three accelerations AC of the reference point and three angular accelerations given by the vector omega dot. For the final part of our review on rigid body kinematics, let's look at the instantaneous center of rotation. To start, note that we have not made any assumption for the choice of the reference point C. So in theory, we could use any point of the rigid body. And in fact, we could even use points outside of the rigid body, which are connected to the rigid body frame. If we consider the entire space as possible selections for the reference point, it is a fact that there exists a very particular reference point at each time instance, namely one for which the velocity vector is zero. And this point is called the instantaneous center of rotation of the body. Due to the fact that the velocity vector is zero, this means that the entire rigid body performs a pure rotation about this point. To deepen these notions, let's look at two examples of different turning wheels. In the first case, A, let's consider a turning wheel that's been completely lifted off the ground and which doesn't move in any direction in the xy plane. The wheel turns with an angular velocity omega which here is indicated by this arrow. But of course, this means in 3D that the angular velocity vector points into the xy plane. The first question is, what is the instantaneous center of rotation for this wheel? And that's of course the center point of the wheel because that's the only point in the body frame that has a zero velocity vector with respect to the coordinates x and y. The second question is, how can we obtain the velocity vector at each point of the wheel? Take for instance the point P on the very top of the wheel and now looking at the formula omega cross ROP means that the velocity vector at P must be a vector that's perpendicular to omega, which points in the z direction, and also perpendicular to the vector ROP, 
So it's actually a vector that points in this direction. If we think about the properties of the cross product, the velocity at each of the points on this line here will point to the right and the length will increase proportionally to the distance from the instantaneous center of rotation here. In other words, what we get is this. Now we can actually do the same thing towards the bottom of the wheel and also to the left and to the right or in fact to any other point in the wheel. So in conclusion, what we have obtained here is a velocity vector for each point of the wheel in terms of the instantaneous center of rotation, which is at rest here, and the angular velocity of the wheel omega. Observe that in this case, the velocity vectors all point in the direction of the angular coordinate, if you think about it in polar coordinates, and the magnitude of the velocity increases proportionally with the radial distance from the instantaneous center of rotation. As the second case B, let's look at the situation where the wheel is perfectly rolling on a fixed ground, meaning that at the point of contact between the wheel and the ground, there is no slip between the wheel and the ground. The angular velocity vector omega, of course, points again into the z direction. First, note that due to the rolling assumption, the wheel will move to the right over time. Now let's pose again the question, where is the instantaneous center of rotation of this wheel? Due to the fact that there is no slip between the wheel and the ground, there's only one point of the wheel that has a zero velocity in terms of the xy coordinate system, and that's the contact point between the wheel and the ground, because the ground here is at rest. Hence, the contact point has to be the instantaneous center of rotation, and all points of the wheel are performing a rotation with omega about this point. With the same line of thought as before, we can now take any point of the rigid body, for instance the center point P of the wheel, and obtain the velocity vector, which in this case points to the right and has a magnitude of omega times r, or we can take the point P prime, which is at the top of the wheel, and obtain a velocity vector that again points to the right and has a magnitude of 2 omega r. Again, we can pick any point along this line and we'll obtain a velocity vector that points to the right and has a magnitude that's proportional to the distance from the center of rotation. And in fact, we can choose any other reference point of the wheel and proceed in the same manner. Now, one final remark about this example. In the first case, the center of rotation remains the same point in the xy plane over all times. In the second case, O is only the center of rotation at this very time instance. That's why it's called the instantaneous center of rotation. Just one moment later, a different point on the wheel and also a different point on the ground will be the instantaneous center of rotation. The set of all points of the rigid body, which at some point become the instantaneous center of rotation is called the pole hold. And the set of points in the xy coordinate system that at some point become the center of rotation is called the her pole hold. It is a good exercise to pause the video now and think about what is the pole hold and the her pole hold in these two examples. So in the first case, the pole hold, as well as the her pole hold, consists exactly of the point O. In the second case, the pole hold, meaning all points of the rigid body that at some point become the instantaneous center of rotation, consists of all outer points of the wheel. And the her pole hold, consisting of all points in the xy coordinate system,
that at some point coincide with the instantaneous center of rotation is all points on the surface of the ground.